Welcome everyone to the Wednesday Night Warriors, episode number 42. I am one half of the Wednesday Night Warriors, Romeo Anthony Colon. Oh, oh shit. There goes uh, the other half of the what? Yeah, he's back. My bad. Hit the wrong button. This this is a bad sign for this episode. Chris G. Michaels, the co-host of Blunt Impact and Joints and Jabronis. How are you doing, friend? I am all right. I am here with Mary Jane. I'm already hitting wrong buttons and shit. I didn't even light the blunt yet. I also go by. I also go by Penta El Cero Dinero, and I also go by. Slice Boogie Light. Let's get it. <laughs> I don't like to say all of his nicknames because I like to Chris, keep Chris humble. Uh, also joining us, the other co-host, Blunt Impact. Oh, there's going to be a, a lot of smoking in this episode. He is the three-time, three-time, three-time baby-making Le Champion. This is Ness. True Heels, what is the deal? As always, honored to be on another episode of Wednesday Night Warriors. And I got to say, man, it was a solid show from from, from both shows. Usually uh, it's one or the other, but you know, I think it was a lot closer this week, so we'll get into it. Yeah, we'll be talking about the March 24th, 2021 editions of AEW Dynamite, WWE, NXT before we get into them, please. Help us out here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. Drop us a like, leave us a comment, share this video, and subscribe if you're not already to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. Let's start with AEW Dynamite. So these guys are nice and high when they're forced to talk about NXT. AEW started with Kenny Omega defeating Matt Seidel in 11 minutes, 20 seconds with the one-winged angel. And who wants to go first? Uh, talking about this match because I have an opinion that might be different from you guys, so I, I want to go second. Ness, all right. If your opinion has anything to do with me telling you or saying that I wanted Matt Seidel to win this match <laughs> solely because this match was so good, in my opinion, uh, it was surprising that it opened the show because clearly you would think that Kenny Omega being the AEW champion world champion he would get like he wouldn't open the show in my opinion but you know it's it's not bad that it opened the show because again it was fire uh, a lot of back and forth action between him uh kenny omega and matt sidell and honestly at some points it kind of seemed like sidell had a chance to win uh it didn't end up like that but again, man, this match was so good. Like, it doesn't even matter who won. I would have took the Matt Seidel win. It, it didn't even have to be a clean win. He could have uh, won via disqualification. I just wanted to see this match again because these guys tore the house down. So my opinion, this was a fire way to start the show off. Okay, here is why we differ. In a vacuum, this was a fun competitive match. You're absolutely right. But we're not in a vacuum. Matt Seidel, the way he's been presented on AEW Dynamite, has no business taking the world's champion to all those near falls. There were some really, really close two and three quarters uh, pinfalls there. Seidel's biggest moment in AEW thus far is slipping off a top rope. Um, he beat Michael Nakazawa with his pants down to even have this match. Embarrassing. And uh, if you're going to do this match... How about at least making a little reference to uh, someone who was a similar sized opponent as Matt Seidel, who Kenny Omega will soon be facing, Rich Swan? I thought that you could have some nice symmetry there, you know, promoting that match. Uh, but nope, no mention. I guess they're just leaving that all to impact. Chris? I mean, it could be worse. You could use the, you could lose your North American title to some fucking jabroni that they just got from another promotion two weeks ago that nobody knows. But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah, this was a disgrace, apparently. It was fucking awesome. This was a solid opener. This was good. This was the best Matt Seidel's looked in fucking years, in my opinion. I have not I have not seen Matt Seidel look this good since he's been in AEW. Then again, I haven't seen a lot of Matt Seidel that's, since like he was in Impact. That's my problem. So, but that's fine, though, because he showed that he could still hang with probably the best wrestler in the world. So, I mean, I'm all for a talent showing what he can do. 
even if he's not supposed to be in that position, I guess, so to speak. But it was a fun match, and yeah, I liked it. Interesting, the next match, far different. Hangman Page squashes Cesar Jabroni in 2 minutes, 12 seconds. Cesar Jabroni, you stole my fucking line. (laughs) (laughs) Lance Archer continues his whining and his crying about Sting. Everybody cries. Awful. It's everybody it's bitches. Everybody <laughs> bitches. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Like everybody's just like, man, Sting, why are you around? And then like, you know, I got a lot of respect for you, Sting. Like, what is it? Do you like you it can be both, but it's like they want to fight him and love him at the same time. <laughs> Britt Baker. D M D with a money promo. Shit on Mick Foley while wearing a flannel around her waist. Nice watch. Nice, nice touch. The audacity. Audacity of these fans to boo Britt Baker when they sing to the heels theme music every week. Now they're offended by a heel, a good heel. I love this promo. Yeah, this shit was great, especially after the match she had last week and then coming out, not even wanting to actually take in the admiration. He was just like, fuck it, I'm coming out here and do some real heel shit. And they were giving her, you know, they were giving her that heel energy, but. She had every right to talk big shit. Even if she talked, even if you know she took the L, that match was fucking amazing. So you know, kudos to her on that. And then getting to come out, I don't want to buy the shirt, but that is a decent shirt. You know, got blood pouring down and shit. That's that's fucking gangster as shit. Continues to show why she's one of the pillars of the women's division in AEW. I like the uh, I like the Foley comment. You got some cheap heat on you there. Everybody loves Foley, so you got you got to hate the comment. She said, uh, it took you 20 years to be a hardcore legend, and I was a legend in, like, 20 minutes or something like that. One night. <laughs> in one night. I uh, love the uh, Kazarian clowning Christian backstage for not doing any work, like his shirt says. They face off next week. And I guarantee Christian had no plans on wrestling next week until someone said, hey, do you work around here? Christian and catering. That's why we signed him here, pal, to put him in catering. Christian and catering. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to that match. I think him versus Frankie is a good way to get him back in the ring because, you know, these guys got a history. And Frankie's an extremely solid worker or a, a great worker, actually. So that is, that's that's a good start for Christian to get back in his groove. I think it's a good start for both guys, though, because SCU looks like they're on the way to breaking up soon because Arian's probably going to get that singles run. So this is a good way to showcase that he can be a good singles competitor without making him an actual singles competitor yet. Trios match FTR and a partner of their choosing defeat Varsity Blondes and Dante Martin in 6 minutes 19 seconds. Uh, Some guy did the C4 move on Dante. Uh, Pinnacle's music sounds like a straight horseman ripoff. I was very disappointed. Wardlow botched whatever he was trying to do in the corner to Pillman. But afterwards, MJF and FTR were very good on the mic uh talking that shit specifically mjf to inner circle and chris jericho and ftr as they're talking i'm like what the fuck are you doing uh wwe jeez how do you let these guys go oh this was these well match wasn't really anything no <laughs> much wasn't really anything yeah the, that the post match segment with the promos and then just going off man oh wait a minute you didn't mention the best part how Sean Spears picked up the victory. Oh. And the crowd that's goes what, that's miles. That's what that was? He, he, he did mention it. And the crowd mention, goes he miles. Oh, did he? Did he? Guy. Yeah. No. He just, he he just refuses to say his name. You yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. Like, specified passenger or some shit. But I, didn't, I was wondering if people, like, kind of peeped that, that he was the one that picked up the, the victory. Because they're like, oh, you know, he doesn't belong. He doesn't belong. And now he's getting the victory. Like, oh, fucking Sean Spears. They're going to complain about him regardless. But... You know, as, as much credibility people they're going to give him, they're going to be like, oh, well, he doesn't deserve it. Or uh, why are they giving him so much? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, you know, it happens. But, yeah, that, that post-match, uh, this has got to lead to, like, blood and guts, man. It's got to be, like, faction versus faction type of match coming out of this. There's no other way. To, there's no other way they can go. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon, hopefully with fans, hopefully we get everything back to normal. Chris? The match was what it was. It wasn't nothing crazy. But um, I think the best part of the promo actually was Dax, cause uh, he was fucking intense. You could he was turning red. He had the uh, 
the rage in his voice. Like, he's been wanting to get that shit off his chest for years, bro. Like, that was a real, a real promo. That, that, you know, that's from the heart, man. So, um, you know, MJF, of course, is going to kill it on the mic. But, uh, man, Dax really got me this week. I was like, fuck, I didn't think he was that good. But FTR, man, they just every week proving why it was a mistake to let him go, Vince. Everything is good with Team Taz. All good. Everything is fine. I busted out laughing during this. Because <laughs> you can see Ricky Starks with his smirk. And Brian Cage looking very confused at what Taz is saying. Well done. This was short, but well done. Ricky Starks is probably the best part. Just fucking with that shit in a grid, right? Just just chilling. Yeah, absolutely. And Cage, of course, being confused. Like, what the fuck? I apologized? Good shit. Tony Schiavone is with QT Marshall. Ugh, I'm going to have to talk about this. Not really. Nas, what do you want to say about this? Fuck QT Marshall. Who cares? <laughs> Who nobody cares about QT Marshall? They're like, they're forcing him into this story. Like, oh, QT Marshall takes forever to come out to help Cody after a post match beatdown. Uh, QT Marshall uh, is a wrestler as well, just like Cody. And, you know, he's just Cody's friend. And, then, you know, QT Marshall, I'm going to tell you something that nobody probably ever told you. Or somebody else probably did tell you, but I'm going to tell you anyway because I don't care. Nobody gives a fuck about QT Marshall. Like, nobody cares. That's coming from the heart. Nobody cares how you feel. Nobody cares that you know Cody. Nobody cares that you won the first ever bunkhouse match in AEW history. Nobody cares about none of that shit. Yeah, so he's proud of shit. Nobody cares. Because it's you. If this leads to possibly a way to write Cody off, I'm going to be extremely upset because there are so many better people that should have done that shit. The whole uh, fucking there was one last Penta. Week. Yeah. This is why I wanted to get, be on the episode last week. The fucking feud with Penta. Penta should have broke his arm and he should have been out. That's how that should have played out. Not him getting the arm breaker and then rolling him the fuck up for a victory. So I'm kind of I'm kind of fired up because of that huh. shit. Because because Cody's involved in this, but yeah, I really don't give a fuck about QT Marshall. You guys don't give a fuck about QT Marshall. Nobody gives a fuck about QT Marshall. Tell them how you really feel, bro. <laughs> fuck. Yeah, I ain't gonna say fuck QT Marshall. Maybe QT Marshall, the on-screen character. Yeah, sure. Fuck. Oh well, yeah, not his life off. But off QT. Camera. No, yeah, no, but he does. Me. He does a lot backstage and behind the scenes for, for sure. AEW, Matt to make AEW. Yeah, to make AEW what it is. So like, I can't, I can't be like, well, QT Marshall. As a matter of fact, I'd rather see him. Why not get this little cheap heat? Maybe he'll, he'll provide a decent match with Cody, and we'll see what happens. No, right? he's gonna no, turn no, full heel. Uh... <laughs> no, man. Give, give QT a chance. A QT talking about his wife in the crowd when he was just flirting with Bunny. When was it? Months ago. We're supposed to forget that, right? <laughs> Cody in a sling, but accepts the exhibition match next week. And says he won't hurt QT Marshall. He will not follow through on the crossroads or the figure four. What the hell is good? <laughs> that should be very now, entertaining. Now, that's, Actually, that's where okay. you lost me. Apparently, that's they got what... that from uh, Bruno San Martino and Larry Zabisco. Yeah, like, you know what the problem is in us? They're not Larry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> QT Marshall, I'll give Cody the benefit of the doubt. You could do Not that. Say, you could do it, yeah, yeah we're gonna, we'll give Cody the benefit of the doubt. But in no way, shape, or form is QT Marshall like Bruno San Martino or Larry Zabisco. We're just going to strike that from our fucking memory banks. Two Hall of Famers. Trios match. Lucha Bros and the Rado Kid defeat the Young Bucks and Brandon Cutler, 12-26. This was one huge, big... PWG, Indy, car crash, just cause. But Phoenix, every week, he does something I've never seen. It's He's outstanding. He's the best luchador currently. I forgot who said, uh, somebody said it, that he is the current day Rey Mysterio. And there's like... I could have sworn that was you. <laughs> I could have, I probably did say it, but no, there's another wrestler or like a Hall oh. of Famer had said it. And it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. So I think every time him, him and Nick Jackson have like a one-on-one -on -one interaction, they pull out something fucking totally different. And it's always amazing. Like, I don't get it. 
Like they, they, I've never seen chemistry between two guys. Well, I have, but like, damn, they're they're up there. But I enjoyed the match. Car crash. Fucking loved every second of it. Then this is the best I see Brandon Cutler. He actually looked kind of smooth in the ring. Okay, relax. Uh, Nas. I know, you love, I know you love your Mexicans. You damn right, man. This was another fire match. I'm you. You guys know again. Lucha Libre till I die. Love my Mexicans. Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid, they brought it. And then the Young Bucks as well. And and actually, I'm going to be the voice of reason as well. Brandon Cutler did what he was supposed to do in that match. He looked decent for, you know, the role he played. I'll, I'll, I'll give him his props. Actually, there's a theme of that. Like, Matt Sidell got, you know, got some shine. Uh, Sean Spears, Brandon Cutler, guys that aren't usually – you know, in the limelight where, uh, where, you know, got some chances, opportunities to show what they can do. Man, look at this guy over here. He's not trying okay. to none of that shit. Who cares, man? <laughs> Let's talk about Laredo Kid. It's nice to see Laredo Kid in there with the, with the oh, yeah. Bros. He's oh. like, it's like their little secret weapon, you know? Yeah, definitely. I'm, honestly, in my opinion, I would rather have them three together than uh, the Lucha Bros and Pac. That's just my opinion. One, yes, because they're all, all luchadors. They all wear masks. That just makes more sense to me. And just like, I, he flows a little bit better with them. They have more experience with each other. They, they team together. So I, I would love for him to be a mainstay and like, maybe not death triangle, but they can try to do, do something, you know, like murder square now or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking snorted. Kenny Omega afterwards comes out, beats up on Laredo Kid. I like that. Nice touch. Oh, I remember you. Triple A, huh? <laughs> and the promo he says to the Young Bucks was so good. I, I have to repeat some of this. He never chose AEW. He chose the Young Bucks. The vision that they created to make this the best wrestling promotion on the planet. And rather than sit with the cool kids, they chose your boy, Brandon Cutler. Omega chooses them, and they never chose Omega back. Sure, maybe Mr. Uh, Callus can be a bit abrasive, <laughs> but uh, Omega will give them one last chance. He t- toss it up. Too sweet. Young Bucks walk out like the selfish pricks they are. Oh, my Omega- God. Omega gets attacked by the Lucha Bros. He wasn't ready. And uh, Gals and Anderson, always late, of course. And Omega's bleeding blood and guts. Omega's facials were great here. Great job by Kenny Omega. And this is where I understand where Bucks was coming from. Yeah, a couple weeks ago on Dynamite, yeah. where you know Kenny was being disrespectful to the Bucks, so I felt like this was their uh, giving him his come up, come up. It's you know he was just being a dickhead. Oh, his new best friends, Gallows and Anderson. You know that's the shit that uh, Callus is saying to them. Like everything that's been going on, I definitely agree with him saying like, AEW. Yes, I'm coming with my friends. I came to the AW, you know, because you guys are going to be here, like, and I'm all for that. But over the past couple of weeks, it hasn't been about Kenny and the Young Bucks. It's been about Kenny and Don Callis or Kenny and the the Good Brothers. So, in the you know, in their minds, they're like, well, you're choosing other, other people over us, so we chose somebody else. Like, how do you even know that we, you were one to tag with us? The last time they were all on the ring, there were there was a, some uh discrepancies going on that night so i kind of understand where they were coming from but you know kenny kenny's off his rocket he was like he sniffed the eight ball and he's just going 100 miles an hour right now chris how big of a downgrade is uh kenny omega to brandon cutler as far as friends go wow that's like (laughs) it's like having the ps5 and then it breaks down for some reason, and you gotta pull out like a fucking Neo Geo pocket, <laughs> and you have one game, and you just have to play that one game over and over. And over. Oh. But that one game films BTE content for you, and there's a lot of fun. <laughs> so you you secretly love it, and you just play it, and you just play it. It's a love hate thing. No, nah, and all honesty, that's a clip. That's a clip. <laughs> Do you like it when a heel makes sense, or do you don't, or or do you disagree with Kenny Omega? Do you think he didn't make sense? No, he was a one hundred percent right. But 
But I gotta understand the young bucks too, because Don Callis is a dick. Yeah, he's man. such a dick. I gotta deal with this guy on two shows. Trust me, That's I know true. Don Callis. That's true. This guy's a, as a matter of fact, in the match, right? Uh, early today with Kenny Omega, Don Callis was on commentary, and they were trying to say like Excalibur and Jim Ross. Jim Excalibur referred to like a fractured mental, you know, with Kenny Omega, and Don Callis says, "You're the guy who wears the mask when he's not even wrestling. Maybe you should see a psychiatrist about that." <laughs> Had me rolling. That's, That's how funny. much of a dick this guy is. So I I understand the young bucks not taking Kenny Kenny's side, but uh, finally, I think this is the final. You know, we get the an actual separation. Dead. The lead is dead. Yeah. For now. The lead is dead. The Undisputed Era is dead. <laughs> Everyone's dying. Oh, my God. Well, the Cubs still going strong. Yeah, bring now. those guys over. <laughs> we need those guys. Cody Rhodes and Brandy Rhodes have a reality show coming to TNT. Good for them. Good for them. Those guys are, are really good people if you ever met them in person. Um. You know, anytime a wrestler gets a show, you know, it's, it's a chance for people to to take wrestling seriously. It's good for the business. It's good for the business, good for the network. Ty Conti defeated Nyla Rose in 922. I don't get it. Why? A lot of overreacting online of how good Ty is, how much how much improved she is. This is the same Ty Conti. <laughs> I I think she has improved, but she's like, yeah, she is a little yeah. overhyped. Like she wasn't amazing. This one is spectacular, though. Uh, Beating Nyla should be a big deal, in my opinion, and I just think this will be wasted. Uh, Afterwards, Sheeta and Bunny get involved after they set up a tag match for next week. I mean, they let Nyla Rose beat Britt Baker to have her go lose to in the finals and then lose to Ty Conti here. What's going on? Can't defend this shit. (laughs) TNT Championship. Darby Allen, John Silver. John Silver gets hurt pretty early on. Separated shoulder. And tries to pop it back in. This is proof, uh, boys and girls, that you could go to the gym every day, like Chris, and work out your arms every day, skip your legs, whatever, and still fuck up your shoulder. It doesn't matter how big your arms are. Uh, the good news is he's only out for, I think, four to six weeks, I think I read, or four to eight. That's good news. Somehow, he continues to match. I don't know if they dumb down the match maybe a little bit, but props to Silver, because it looked like he, he just... He gutted that shit out. Um, Dark Order interferes a bit, which brings out Sting with the baseball bat to even up to even it up. I love Darby uh, doing a coffin drop off the ropes, springboard off the ropes. After Silver had been practicing earlier how to avoid it, he still gets hit by it. That was hilarious. Darby wins with a code red after Silver can't connect on the Brody Lee powerbomb, 1340. Afterwards, Sting lifts Silver up. Uh, gets a fist bump from Darby. I thought it was cool. What's not cool, however, is yet another show-closing brawl. This time with the Dark Order and Matt Hardy's faction. I forgot what they named them, Matt Hardy something. Uh, if you didn't do these show-closing brawls, or not even show-closing, they do them during the show, too. If you didn't do it so often, it might mean more when it actually makes sense. Because it made sense in this spot to do that. But you just do it so all the time that it just gets, oh, another one. Another one, another one. This main event was definitely a fucking banger. Definitely props to John Silver, man. Wishing him a speedy recovery. Uh, Darby Allen's a fucking maniac. It definitely was funny how he was practicing, trying to avoid the coffin drop and still got hit with one. The rest of the Dark Order helping him practice, they get hit in a group spot, so... That, oh, that segment they were doing trust falls and i forgot yeah. who at the end evil and let somebody just fall i forgot who it was yeah it was five they hate five <laughs> they hate five that was funny yeah the, the matt hardy shit i don't really care about that about, i don't really care about butcher and the blade and i and i actually like those guys too but i just don't care that they're with matt hardy you know i fucked up my left shoulder like 10 years ago and since I started going back to the gym, I got to slow down on the shoulder workout sometimes because I'll be feeling it. So, John Silver, I feel you, <laughs> bro. No, but starting with the uh, with the trust falls, man, the drills, the uh, the coffin drop drills, that was funny. The match itself was good, but you can tell he got hurt. And he got it out, though. They did the best they could. I He definitely slowed down a little bit, and he was just kicking most of the time after that because he can't strike. But uh, damn, they got through it, and the coffin drop onto the dark order outside. 
I'm like, I have mixed feelings about the Matt Hardy team. I like to call them the Hardy Party. It's weird, but it makes sense. They're like mercenary kind of guys. Matt Hardy got money. He's just hiring a team. Matt Hardy needs money. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. Well, he's taking 30% of their yeah. shit too, probably. So, And then, you know, you got Bunny. Now Bunny's having matches too. So let's see what's up. Match of the night. Um, even though they did a lot of spots that were completely unnecessary. Uh, I'll go with the six band Car Crash, Lucha Bros, Laredo Kid, Young Bucks, and that other guy. All, all agreed, or do one of you want to go with the main event? No, I'm going with the same match. Yeah. MVP, I got quite a few. I thought Kenny Omega was great. Britt Baker, that promo, and John Silver for gutting it out. Definitely Kenny Omega. And yeah, honorable mention to John Silver for continuing that match after, you know, getting hurt. I'm just go with John Silver because he fucking that's tough, man. That's Triple H shit. <laughs> uh, Jabroni of the night. I am gonna go with Hikaru Shida just for her shoes. I didn't really like her shoes. I didn't like them. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's like the huge platform, fucking, and she's swinging a Kendall stick and that. And like, no, oh. that's who's your Jabroni. <laughs> I gotta say, I'll say Caesar, but no. Whatever that Jabroni, Caesar Jabroni. That's his last name, actually. You had it. What, Bononi? Oh, Jabroni. Oh, uh, Jabroni. <laughs> Chris thought of that. You got to credit Chris whenever I say that before he hits me with a season this stuff. Go ahead, Chris. Who's your Jabroni? Oh, man. Should I go with Caesar Jabroni as well? Because he, he, <laughs> he deserves it. He got squashed. But um, I don't know. How about Christian Cage being a fucking old fart backstage telling stories about the good old days to the youngins? <laughs> And then Kaz just cutting ass on him. Like, when you actually work, bro, we all have that one coworker. It's like, bro, he's like, I want to I'm tired. Tired of what, nigga? You ain't been working. <laughs> all right, let me just uh, wave goodbye to half of our viewers as we talk NXT. Thanks, thanks for sticking around as long as you did. Uh, Raquel and Dakota Kai defeat Zoe Stark and Io Shirai. Wow, I'm spitting. Raquel with her one arm powerbomb on Stark in 11.53. And then afterwards, Raquel powerbombs EO on the announce table after it didn't break, but still looked cool. Uh, I thought decent match. I thought Zoe Stark looked good. And Raquel, of course, they made her look like a beast. Yeah, I got to piggyback off that. They've been giving, I've been watching a little bit recently. Um, they love Zoe Stark. She just keeps getting utilized and utilized. This is, probably the first person in a long time that didn't get a lot of you know publicity and fair and fair coming to the you know coming to the nxt roster and they're like actually consistently using her you know so i'll, I'll give them props for that and she's been showing up so that's probably why because she's a, a great talent i didn't see much of like a lot of her prior to uh coming to nxt but she definitely been showing up and showing out so i'll give her her props for that Dakota being the weak link, that that whole relationship is about to get severed soon. The match did what it had to do. It made Raquel look strong, and it gave some shine to Lacey. Uh, Zoe, sorry. That was a, her, her old name, right? Lacey Ryan. Yeah, or something. Right. Yeah. yeah, Zoe Stark now. Uh, she was good. She looks good. I, she, I just thought of it in my mind. Malcolm Bivens should drop fucking rusty whatever his face <laughs> rusty face right and have a woman stable right zoe stark would be like a good mid card centerpiece for that and like raquel could be the powerhouse and like another and like a tag team or some shit but just you know big booking down the road but uh yeah i mean i like the 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 interaction between raquel, raquel and eo now i'm looking forward to the match we get security we see security footage of adam cole going after kyle o'reilly in his um MMA gym, and as Kyle arrives to the building, Roderick Strong comes up to him and tells him to kick Adam's ass, and he wants to kick his ass too, only for Kyle to say this doesn't involve Roddy, and Roddy says, all right, you can both go to hell. <laughs> I love this. Roddy, very believable here. It made sense. Um, you could you could pick sides here. You could see where Kyle's coming from. You could see where Strong is coming from. I like that. Yeah. I it, <laughs> I was I thought I was bugging out because he was there for a minute, like, 
like this motherfucker we're like what should i do but he was like in the same spot so i thought my stream froze but i was watching it and he sold it man it was like this is it. he's really thinking about it and he was like yo i'm just out fuck y'all and hey that's the that's what's best for the group right now so hopefully he does his thing individually i'm sure he'll be in the gauntlet man when adam cole walked into that gym and Kyle O'Reilly scooped his ass up and stamped him on the ground. That shit sound like it fucking hurt. Like, you can't fake that. You can't oh, fake legit that. take down. Yeah, that was a legit takedown. Like, the punches that came after, even those shits look real. But <laughs> you can definitely fake that. Yeah, you didn't. You can't fake that, that takedown. Props to Roddy, man, because he's usually, like, the one person that people say that he doesn't really have much of a personality. He definitely showed it right there. He's like, he's the guy that can definitely go in the ring, but he just needs more to his character. Uh, I can understand him being hurt because, like, these were his brothers. These are his brothers, you know, his, his best friends. They've been together for the last, like, three, like, two, three years, or probably longer than that. But um, this is just so sudden. And he's trying to make sense of it all. Kyle's just like, fuck it. It's, it's not so much fuck you, Roddy. It's definitely fuck Adam. It's fucked the group. Bobby Fish is somewhere. Don't know what the hell's going on. He's probably depressed. Somebody needs to check on Bobby Fish. Uh, but yeah, props to Roddy, man. He definitely sold that 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 statement, telling them all they can both go to hell. I hope I can't wait to see if he comes out at 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 the at the sanction match. See what happens. I was definitely kind of more on on Roddy's side here. I, I thought you know. I thought Kyle was maybe being too too harsh on Roddy, but um. Yeah, and he I was. Thought, he was. And I thought they were going to maybe lead to strong possibly refereeing that match at TakeOver. Which there's crazy. still time, but I don't know. That would be crazy. Bronson Reed beat L.A. Knight in 1209 with the Tsunami Splash. And to me, this was rather enjoyable. Uh, I thought they both did good. And I'm not surprised by the win for Reed as many others were. I think L.A. Knight is here to put people over. You have the guy lose in his second fucking match. Why? You put steam behind a guy, an actual guy that could actually legit everything you want. Decent worker. Guy looks great. He could talk shit. He's losing a fucking Bronson Reed in the second match. Match was good. Solid match. I enjoyed it. But I just hate the booking, man. I'm just, I fucking hate it. Well, the way you always described LA Knight to me was that, like, he's a decent hand. But he's not going to really be, like, a big star or anything. I mean, he, you could give him a little show. <laughs> you could fucking give him a little momentum to start off. It's his second match. You give him a 50-50 booking right right off the gate? It's like, now I now we can't take him serious. I'll never take him serious. As opposed to, let me take him serious in the beginning. Then, you know, maybe he could fade out. Whatever. And that's where do you fall on this? Uh, I'm not even really that high on LA Knight to begin with. Uh, he can definitely he definitely talk his ass off. I'll give him that. Like he has his character and personality down packed. I'm just not like that huge of a fan of his in ring work. Um, but I do kind of uh, uh it's in the middle because it's like all right you did bring him in here in this big thing. I was surprised that he you know he lost to Bronson Reed. It's kind of like mad random. Uh but uh it is what it is. It happens. They're showing at least they're showing that you know they bring somebody in maybe you can do jobs and you know give back because usually whenever somebody debuts they're just on a roll. Some news here due to Danny Burch suffering a separated shoulder. There we go with that shit again. He and Oni Larkin have to vacate the NXT tag team titles. So congrats to Vacant on adding two more championships to his resume, very Hall of Fame resume. And on night one of Takeover it'll be MSK, Grizzled Young veterans and they got the fantasma to meet in a triple threat tag match to crown new champs speaking of only larkin he loses to carrying cross in 915 doomsday saito and a forearm to the back of his head this was very hard hitting cross had a bunch of bruises and scars he's even bleeding from the chest i was worried as fuck that cross re-injured his shoulder he was shaking his shoulder around uh when the ref goes to raise his hand to signal he's the winner, he he looked at that ref like he was going to kill him. Gave him a 
deaths there. Finn Balor comes out, talks trash, him and Karrion. Finn saying Cross doesn't know how to control his emotions, playing off last week, being concerned for Scarlet. I'm just here for it. I just want to see how the, the, the match, the, only Logan versus Cross was fucking great, but I'm just really looking forward to see how uh, Cross versus Balor plays out. I want, I want to see if it, I got to see more out of Cross. I'm not too high on Cross either like that, but you know I'm willing to give at least this match a chance. I like the match. It's physical, hard hitting, everything that I like. I'm not surprised that they gave Oni a, a, a lot of offense, and that's a good thing because Oni Lorcan's good. The promo, I don't know, it's not about like Finn's delivery. It's just a little off. <laughs> like I get what he was trying to say, but the way he was trying to say it, I was just like, it's like, why do you sound like that? And it's not his accent. Uh, I was it's about to say it's because he's Irish, isn't it? No, 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 it's not his accent. It's just the way he. Del- I, I don't like the way he delivers promos sometimes. I like the story. They're gonna try to. T- they're they're laying they're laying down the groundwork. You know what I mean for the for the match, and I appreciate that. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the match. I think it's gonna be good. I'm high on Cross, and I think I think Cross is gonna. Yeah, I think he's gonna show out. I hope he shows up. I saw some people on Twitter talking about how they think uh, because of this promo that Finn was gonna like bring the demon out of Takeover. I didn't get that impression at all. Did you guys? He started off the promo with like. <laughs> I used to have demons, but now I have them. <laughs> I realized they were emotions. You know that accent is really good. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to master like my emotions. <laughs> hey, babe, give me a fucking beer. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. A little something more romantic. Jesus Christ. Some more news. William Regal announces... <laughs> But a 12-man battle royal will take place next week. The last six men will compete night one to take over in a gauntlet eliminator with their entry number determined by when they get eliminated. The winner meets, if you're still with me after all that, the winner meets Johnny Gargano in night two for the North American Championship. The battle royal will feature Kushida, Leon Ruff, Austin Theory, L.A. Knight, Tyler Rust, Jake Atlas, Bronson Reed, Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes, Roderick Strong, Isaiah Swerve Scott, and Pete Dunn. A few interesting names in that list. To face Gargano, that can make some really good matches. But the storyline has been leaning Dexter Loomis all this time. And I really hope not, because that's that's probably one of the more downer matches you can make out of all those things. <laughs> I don't know. All right, like... Pete Dunne seems the best, yes. match, in my opinion, because it's it's Mania. Oh, not Mania. I'm sorry. It's Takeover sort of. Mania weekend. Yeah, Mania weekend. So you want to have those type of matches, those big marquee, those big money matches, and that can definitely be one of them. Volta defeats Drake Maverick in 25 seconds with a power bomb and half crab. All things considered, that's a Good job by Drake Maverick. Yeah, we did 25 second ass whooping. He, he lasted what 23 more seconds than you thought he would. Is that is that who was in the ring? I thought that was fucking Spike Dudley. I think it could have been a lot worse. The real beating was for Champa after, because Champa comes out and tells Walter that he misspoke when he said that Walter intrigued him. He meant the UK title intrigued him. And a pair of jump Champa and Walter rips off his necklace, chops the shit out of him. And then finally says the match is on for TakeOver. I love this. Man, you know what? I like Ciampa, but right now it's like, Mom, can we go get John Moxley? And we'd be like, oh, we got John Moxley at home. And it's Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, that's just like kind of the vibes I get from him. But, you Jeez. know, that's nothing, that's nothing. I mean, that's not a, that's not a dis. I was, 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 was going to say, I was going to say, that's not a, you know, that's not a bad thing. Let me finish. Sheesh. <laughs> this is that's going to be a crazy match. Like I, I don't know, man. And of course, Chris, there's still Timothy Thatcher out there. We don't know what's going on with that. He's away. Killian Dane is away. Nobody knows where they're at. Oh the, the, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the real reason. Kayfabe, pal. The uh, the assumption is is that Imperium abducted them or did something with them. But uh. Walter versus Ciampa, it feels kind of out of nowhere, but I'm here for it. I want to watch it. Earlier in the day, Robert Stone 
paid Mercedes Martinez to be Aaliyah's partner against Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart. She accepted but wants more money after the match. There was a great video on Twitter that I will play for the, you, the viewers, at home. <sighs> All right, guys. Before we go in the gym, which may be our last time going in the gym, I uh, I didn't think I'd be having this conversation with you, but I'm going to be real. Um, I got into some bad things with some bad people, okay? And um, I, I, I didn't want to have to ask you this, but do you guys got any money I could borrow? Do you have any cash? Uh, uh, Aaliyah. Uh, I want to go to McDonald's. No, guys, that, I'm not... I don't want to... <sighs> Johnny Gargano barges into William Regal's office to complain about the gauntlet eliminator gimmick. He thinks it's unfair because he deserves more time to prepare for his opponent. Regal says that if he's Johnny Takeover, it shouldn't be a problem. He should just study everyone. Johnny was so mad that he doesn't even close William Regal's door. Yeah, do that in Black House. Get your ass kicked. Yeah, but the alternative is better because if you if you do it in a Hispanic household and you slam the door, you're fucked. The NXT Women's Tag Team Championship is on the line. I have to say that very proudly. I know it gets a rise out of people. Ember and Shotzi defeat Aaliyah and Mercedes. Ember with the eclipse on Aaliyah. Four minutes. This match was nothing. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I want to say about it is that Aaliyah has some very nice clips. I might edit that out. I don't know. She just, like, was in a bad spot, like, trying to take the Eclipse. She should have, like, I don't know. I don't like how she was just standing there, the way she was just standing. She was just, <laughs> just not doing nothing, waiting for the move to come. Like, you could have been stumbling. Sell it. Like, sell the shit. That's why you're still in NXT jobbing. Cameron Grimes talks to Roderick Strong backstage and says that he's heartbroken over the Undisputed Era split, too. He says they should rebrand the team. They could do it together. And is the Undisputed Era brand for sale? Uh, a very annoyed Roddy punches him, <laughs> and Grimes throws a feet, throws a fit, just cursing out everyone on the ground. It was worth a shot, Cameron Grimes. It was worth a shot. The undisputed era, I would have, I would went for that too. You know? Always scheming, stay yeah. scheming. Got the intellectual properties. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say your shirts? <laughs> Jordan Devlin. Defeats Kushida in 923 with a roll-up into a bridge. There's an actual name for that move, but I forgot what it was. Legato, the Fantasma interfered. I thought this was heading to a no contest, but they actually let Jordan win. Afterwards, Kushida wrecks Legato. Escobar faces off with Devlin. And HBK's music plays. What is HBK doing at CWC? He pulls a ladder from under the ring, pushes it into the ring. The stakes have been raised at TakeOver. It'll be a ladder match between... Devlin and Escobar. And that was the perfect guy considering he had a ladder match for a disputed IC title once upon a time. Nice synergy. I enjoyed this match. The only thing that really my only gripe was like how they use Kushida to, you know, take the fall for this. I feel like I'm nitpicking because he was as the match was coming down to the end, and this is another thing. He's working that arm. He was working the shit out of uh Devlin's arm. Just for him to win with a roll up, like that annoyed the fuck out of me, honestly. After a, a great contest, just to finish, just ticked me off. But yeah, I'm ready for this. Now it's a ladder match. That Ooh. shit's fire. And they had the goat to come out and pretty much, you know, announce it. Say it with your chest. Say it with your yeah, chest. The, nice. the goddamn goat. HBK, the greatest of all time. The greatest. I wonder why he was there. It's because he was running the fucking show, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H is in quarantine, dog. I uh, like that touch, though. It was it was fitting. It was poetic. You know what I mean? What you said, synergy. Perfect word for it. You ever heard of cousin Stanley? Remember good enough. This that this is that's SpongeBob's cousin. Jordan Devlin is fucking Finn Balor. Finn Balor's cousin Stanley. Okay. What this what this really is is when you <laughs> Ma, I want Finn Balor. We have Finn Balor no, at home. No. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan Devlin. Adam Cole passes by Shawn Michaels and, and, and you just say to yourself, Oh, maybe maybe in another timeline, maybe in another timeline this match happened. Then Cole and O'Reilly have a sit down at the table on the stage. William Regal scolds them for getting the authorities involved. 
and embarrassing the company, William Regal is so good at scolding. He was great. He makes the match at TakeOver unsanctioned because Kyle isn't cleared medically. Adam Cole tells a story. Nice callback to ROH if you remember their feud. And I'll say what he said because I thought I thought the writing here was brilliant. Cole said he was blind, but now you can see. Undisputed Era was never about brotherhood. He disses Kyle for failing to win the NXT title, but still befriending Finn. Cole scolds Kyle for trying to bring Finn into the Undisputed Era. Cole says Kyle is comfortable being a lapdog and a sidekick. That's not who Cole is. He says Yui was about being the best, and he's the best, not the rest of the guys. He had the legendary title. He sold the shirts. Kyle and the Undisputed Era are nothing without him. Everyone except everyone except Kyle knows who will win. Then he signs the contract, and I thought, those were fighting words to everyone in Undisputed Era, not just Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle, Brody, they never had their own shirts. Bobby said they you know, it's undisputed, <laughs> undisputed era. Adam Cole had Adam Cole's shirt. So baby, that shit baby, like everything. Guy. Yeah, like honestly, he got a kind of has a point. So I thought that was absolute fire from Adam Cole. And then Kyle around comes back. Says he grew up and he starts talking about accountability. No more Damn, BS. Accountability. At least some people, you know, can do that shit. No more BS, sneak attacks, and four-on-one beatings. They all became better wrestlers and stars in NXT, but he's the only one to become a better person. Adam is the same asshole who signed in 2017. Probably got worse. Kyle says, I sold my soul for Undisputed Era, and I want it back. Kyle throws the pen at Adam, who tosses the table aside for a fight, but security holds them back. They yell at each other. You see the TakeOver logo in the background. This was awesome. Great intensity. Great job by everyone involved. Yeah, man. This is a great way to end the show. Kyle's not really known for his promos. I think he did a great job here, um, as long as he keeps keeps it up. Because it's, it, well, it's only, like, what, another week? <laughs> another, like another two episodes or so? This just kind of sucks, though, because they're both like, fuck the group, but like, fuck you more, but fuck the rest of the group. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Kyle Roddy's just wasn't like, saying yeah, nice yeah. things about the group either. No, nah, he wasn't. This it is was very just like, bad. This is bad. <laughs> your tag team partner. They're all just like, fuck Adam Cole, fuck this guy, yeah. fuck Roddy Strong, Bobby Fish, where is he? Fuck him too. We don't even know. Yeah, where honest. Like. That's how. That's pretty much what's going on. It's like, fuck everybody. Match of the night. Devlin Kushida. Yeah. Same thing. And MVP. Oh, I got a bunch. I'm going to go with Gargano. He was great. Cameron Grimes made me laugh. Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, William Regal, Strong. This is, I got six MVPs. What? One, two, three. <laughs> I thought they were all great. Uh, I'm going to give it to Zoe Starks. Even in the loss, she definitely impressed me the most in that opening tag. I'm going to give it to Jordan Devlin and Santos, man, because that face-off, that shit just had, like, big match feel written all over it. So I'm a fan of both guys. I hope they tear it up. And Jabroni of the night, I'm going to go with uh, uh, Robert Stone. Anytime you have to ask your children for money, I think that's just a, a, a bad, bad parenting. Not to get personal, but there has been a time where I have asked my daughter, just for a few pennies, just for a few pennies, but that was for play. I was buying ice cream. I was just playing around with her. I wasn't really asking her for money, you fucking jabroni. How about you sign some better clients and take the, get the Matt Hardy deal? You might as well just go to AEW and become part of the Matt Hardy brand so you can make some type of money. He'll just take 30% of your shit, but at least you won't be broke. Then you could buy your kids ice cream like I do, you fuck. I've had my kids buy me gifts with the money I give them. So. <laughs> Nah, but my LVP is going to be Aaliyah, man. She pissed me off just standing there looking goofy, waiting to get hit with the Eclipse. I could imagine Ness giving his kid, one of his kids, $10, and then like two minutes later immediately being like, yo, can I hold five? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? You don't want to give your dad $5? I'll, I'll give you, you give five. $5. That's more than $5. I would say Aaliyah's lips are one in a million. See what I did there? You did there. 
Aaliyah will probably be in AEW in like two years, and and people will say, oh, she's improved so much from NXT, she'll still be doing the same shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hell, shit. The ratings war. AEW, 757,000 viewers down 9K. NXT, 678K viewers up 81K. AEW wins. <laughs> Shocker. 64 to 11 to 2. And we got to go to the Wednesday Night Warrior scoreboard where we decide what was the better show of the week. Chris, I'll let you go first. Do I even have to ask you? No, sir, you do not. Um, I thought AEW definitely won in the ring. But nothing along the levels of Britt and Rosa last week where you just have to automatically crown them the winner. That, where you don't have a choice, where you don't embarrass SB3 on the channel. And, yeah, get him upset. I personally am more into the character work and storylines on NXT, at least for this night. A lot of stuff on AEW going in very annoying directions. QT Marshall. Lance Archer. Everybody cries. The end of the show brawls. Matt Seidel pushing the world champion (laughs) to his limit. Nyla Rose losing to Ty Conti. NXT Are you upset tonight. about that? You're upset about that? I think I think if you beat Nyla Rose, it should mean something, and I don't think this is going to go anywhere. Because Nyla Rose has been booked as a native beast, a monster. Um, to me, this night, NXT won in the booking department. And AEW, AEW is not this masterful show that has no flaws. They have flaws. I just named all of them. They have flaws that you have to acknowledge sometimes. You can't just be biased. You got to be unbiased. And that's what A-W. did you think? <laughs> it was the you know I'm an ring action guy. They, the the matches just stood out to me more. I agree with the storylines that some of them that they were pushing. Like I, because again, I don't give a fuck about QT Marshall, but uh, yeah, I was there for the action. But as it stands currently, it doesn't even matter. AEW is up 31 to 8 to 1. But as I said, uh, whoever wins the last week of the Wednesday Night War is the ultimate victor in this entire war. Because that's how just just how wars work. You have to win at the end. Isn't that fucking takeover? Is it? Shit. Ness, where can everyone find you? You can follow me on Twitter. (laughs) Yo, you're a crafty motherfucker, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at skinny underscore Kravitz. You can follow me on Instagram at skinny underscore underscore Kravitz. You can catch me on the Truth of Heat YouTube channel. I'm one half of Review of Honor, where my man is Stat King, the man of a thousand and four numbers. We review everything that happens in a Ring of Honor ring. If you're watching this, by the time you see this, hopefully we will have up the uh, 19th anniversary show review roundtable possibly so we'll see how that goes uh, you can always catch me on Blood Impact and Joyce's Jabronis with my man Chris G we form the Pie Heels Kick Ropes Roundtable Rebel pop up on the roundtables uh, and as always you can hear my illustrious voice on True Toxicity I'm so tired of hearing this illustrious voice Chris don't you have an illustrious voice too? No, but you can hear Ness's illustrious voice on True Toxicity <laughs> along with mine. And you could also find me at True Hill Chris G. And of course, right here on the YouTube channel. Wednesday Night Warriors for the next few weeks, unfortunately. And then after that, Blunt Impact, Joints and Jabronis, and whatever happens with NXT. Because <laughs> now Blunt Impact is switching days and it's a whole clusterfuck. So we'll see what happens. That's right. Yeah. We forgot to talk about you guys. You guys agree that's a good move by Impact, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's smart. It only and it's not even because of like and oh NXT they're going to be in ratings like war with NXT blah blah, blah. not even a ratings war a ratings a ratings squash, but we have something at, literally every night of the week wrestling on every night of the week that of, of just Monday through Friday. That's I, fucking great for all of us. I just don't agree with Impact starting. The Thursday of yeah, Takeover that's Night 2. That's, that's bad. Right. I mean, but they're technically can... not going up against another network because Night 2 is only on Peacock, no? Peacock. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, ne- 
<laughs> have have fun signing up to that bullshit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll shoot I'll shoot the peacock before I sign up for it. Okay. They just you know it's crazy. They Sorry, just edited that out because that was going to offend somebody. You can find me the pride of NY Twitter and Instagram right here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. Two more episodes of the Wednesday Night Warriors and one third of the True Rewind Gang. Ness, we want to thank you for joining us okay. on this episode of the Wednesday Night Warriors. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do some more shows together. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens. We are the Wednesday Night Warriors. We'll be back next week for our penultimate episode. I just love using that word, penultimate. It means, you know, second to last. So I don't know if you knew that. Uh, for Ness, for Chris G, I am Romeo Anthony Cole. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week on the Truth Heat YouTube channel.